Good evening, everyone. This is Dolores Cannon with the Metaphysical Hour. And we're back from England, so it's a live show tonight. This is August the 1st, 2014. I don't know how it got to be August that fast. I'm thinking it's Monday, so I'm not the one to talk to. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've only been back a couple of days and we're still on jet lag. But... Um, I don't know, but it seems like the jet lag seems to take longer to get over the more we keep going. That uh, used to be, I don't think it took so many days that we <laughs> fell out of it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we go to, to England a lot because we do have our office there. This is the first time I've got to see it. And what did you think of it? It's beautiful. Uh, Julia has been there several times, and she goes over and stays, and I come back. But we moved it to Glastonbury about a year ago. Right. And it's a beautiful house. It's a three-story house. And it is part living quarters and part office for the business. And we take care of all the all the business in um, uh, Europe. Europe and England and all those er- those areas over there. So, um, but it's really nice. It's so beautiful and it's quiet out there. It's a beautiful area. Not at all like London. London is so <laughs> hectic. It takes you two hours just to drive around London to even get out of London. And you're so tired of driving by that time. But you get off to Glastonbury and it's nice and quiet. Like you said, you wouldn't believe where we have the house is only a Block off it's just, it's just uh, yeah, it's the street over from the, the high street, and Which all is, the activity. High street is a high street in England. The main street of any city is high street. Oh, that's why they all call it the same. It's all high street. Yes, <laughs> here we call it main street. Right, it's high street there, and and this is like just uh, yeah, you could say it's a block. It, it's maybe a little bit more than that, but you're really just a block, just a street over from the, uh, the main thing, and then the high street is just right there. But you wouldn't know it. Designed beautifully is where you really can't tell. We were driving down it. It's where all the restaurants are, and that's where we gave our classes on right. that street. And there was a lot more traffic. And But, yeah, we go out to where the house is, and it's nice and quiet and peaceful. And you can see the tour right from the house, standing high on the hill. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful view, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> And the energy there is really good. I didn't know because the energy is so strong around the tour, I didn't know what it would be like to be that close to it. But, of course, it depends. we got a caller already. So it depends on, I guess, how you relate to energy. Right. I was going to give out the toll-free number, but it sounds like somebody's already got it. Go ahead and do this, and then we can do that number after that. Okay. Somebody... <laughs> Hello. Dolores, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, hi, my name's Earl. Hi, Earl. Oh, it's so nice to hear from you. Um, I, I I would like to ask you a question. Go ahead. And um, when I was in the tenth grade. I was laying on the sofa, and I was home from school for a week, not feeling well. I didn't eat anything for that week, and I woke up. I thought I woke up, and I went to the front door, and I opened up the door, and everything looked like... It it sort of looked like magic, but I can't explain it, but because... A couple of years before that, a tree was cut down on the side of the house, but when I opened up the door, it was there. Mm. And and I came and and I and I just shook my head and I went back and I I laid back down and I said, "Did this really happen?" And then I went back and looked out the front door and of course it wasn't there, but I experienced this weird thing that happened to me and that was in 1970. Uh-huh. I was born in nineteen. I was born in nineteen fifty three. Um, in two thousand and seven, 
I'm a carpenter, and I was building a house, and I was working on a, uh, I was laying concrete, and one of my employees was in front of me, and I was operating the Georgia buggy, and it malfunctioned, and I couldn't control the throttle, and I couldn't stop it, and I was screaming to him to get out of the way, and finally he did, but by the time I got a chance to jump off of the Georgia buggy, it threw me up in the air, uh, and I came down on my head, and I had a, I went to child trauma, and I had a, what you would call a near-death experience. Oh, okay. Now, I never saw the light, <laughs> and I want to share this with everybody. I never saw the light. You probably I didn't. didn't the only thing light I remember. Hit the concrete. <laughs> I'm so, a little light. Well, <laughs> my God, I, I was... Dolores, I was bleeding out of my eyes. I was bleeding out of my ears. I was bleeding out of my nose. I was coughing up blood, and I told them the guys that were working for me, I said, who called the ambulance? You know, we got Twitter support here. We, I got a job to do. <laughs> but the ambulance came, and they took me to shock trauma, and I was fine. I, 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 I never really blacked out until... I was in, um, they gave me a, 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 a CAT scan, and when I was in a CAT scan, I had a grand mal seizure, and I, I died, because my heart, they, they pulled me out of the, the thing, and they, they put the paddles on me, and they got my heart going again, and they, they put me in a drug-induced coma. Uh-huh. The whole time I was there... I never, ever experienced going to the light. But all of a sudden, I woke up, and I was above the table, and I watched myself come into my body, and I said, oh, my goodness, this hurts. This is not feeling real good. Uh, yeah. And then I told them all about, you know, everything, and, and then I started to remember stuff. Um, it has taken me, and this happened about six, well, in 2006, 2007, and I want to tell you, I, the, I'm, a, I'm a master carpenter. I've always been able to survive on my own, and then I got real angry. I got so, so, so angry that I told my higher self that I can't do this no more and I need somebody to, I said, if you've got, excuse my English because I'm going to share this with you. I said, Ted. I have the, I have, oh my goodness. I got the balls to come here. What about you? And I and I was screaming <laughs> and hollering at my blood, bloody, I'm serious, at my higher self. And I was up in my bedroom, and I saw this being <laughs> come into my bedroom. Dolores... It was as white, as light, the most powerful, bright white that you could look at, uh -huh. but yet it didn't glow. It was just really, really bright, bright, bright white. And... It, just go ahead because I've I heard all of this before, and it's you're not the only one. This happens a lot to people, so don't feel weird. Well, I thank you for that because I have a friend in Germany that also saw one of these same beings, 
And my conclusion to this, and I need your help here, um, because this is what I really think, and and I I need to have some type of person to say, okay, that I'm not crazy. But well, I, I know you're not crazy. <laughs> this is what I think. <laughs> I think that I play music, okay? And I know about the 12 notes of an octave in the scale of music. I, I, I'm very gifted in music. Nine. And somehow I think music and the octave of vibration is connected to what I'm trying to express. Yeah. Uh, at a higher dimensional self of who we are, is it possible <laughs> is, is it, go ahead. Is it possible that her higher self has said go play in the lower dimensions and If you really truly get lost, like I did, they'll be there to share their face. Mm -hmm. Because I had told you, I I hate this world. I hate, I hate, I hate the fact that. Because look, Dolores, I I love the fact that I love trees and the flowers and the birds and the bees, but do you think I want to play cowboys and Indians? No. Uh, do I Do I like what's going on with the world and everything? Jeez, it's hard to live here with all that crap. Yeah. You don't know how many times uh, I've heard this from people over and over again. Oh, my God. Oh. I thank you for your work. But, but let me explain that, that, that being that being that, that being that came to me that he looked. I was, I'm not saying it's, it's a he because it came to me in my bedroom. It was an, a, a, an, a whole body being. It was so bright white, like milk white light. But it 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 it, it was so bright, but it didn't radiate the light. To make the room glow, it just radiated itself, so it didn't light up the room. It would just, it just lit up itself. And you think that was my higher self because I was so pissed off at him for sending me here in the first place to experience the this shit. Have been your guide or your guardian angel. That's what they look like. And you were angry, and you. Uh, you were- to talk to it, did it talk? Angry? Oh my God, Dolores! You got no idea how angry I have been. I've been experiencing this world, and nobody seems to be able to get along. Mm. But it did the big. God, I needed to talk to you. Talk to you. Um, did it talk to me? No. No, it just flashed in and flashed out, man, like a heartbeat, man, and and uh. I got a feeling that can I can I share this to you? Yeah. Um I was really, really angry and frustrated about the Catholic Church about people getting on their knees and praying to some some entity God and I said I will never get on my knees ever. Yeah. And uh I was meditating, and I was doing the best I could, and, and, and look, I'm still just learning here, you know, I'm just experiencing this stuff, and all of a sudden, I had this experience that I was taken into this area where it was just, just dark and gray, and all of a sudden, it, it, it looked like a fog, and then, and then before I knew it, there was like a, a light behind these beings, and then all of a sudden, there was like there was these beings, and there was, <laughs> you might think I'm crazy, but there was, because I said to myself, I would never, ever get on my knees to any entity, and I think I met, Jesus, 
people are listening to this, I think I met Jesus because I swore to myself that I would never get on my knees, and and somehow I was taken into this place where the, it it was all of a sudden I was able to see this dude, <laughs> and the best way I can explain it is I think that it was Jesus, and there was like beans on both sides of him, and if I count them, yeah, there was six of them on each side, so there was 12 of them, and he was in the middle, Yeah. and I started to walk toward him, and I thought to myself, oh my God, this is, this, this is the guy that I was taught about in all my religions. I think that I should get down on my knees, and I said, no, I'm not ever going to get down on my knees, and as soon as I said that I would never get down on my knees, he broke rank and came toward me and gave me a hug. And he said, you got it. So what do I do to explain to people about that? Mm-hmm. Am I emotional? Yeah. I was raised Catholic, and I tell you what, I think it's a bullshit. <laughs> well, you haven't read very many of my books, have you? No, I haven't read any of them. Okay, I just all of know this, that for some I, reason I needed to call you and, and talk to you. <laughs> this is all explained in my books. This happens to lots and lots and lots of people. That was your counsel. All those beings were there. That was your counsel that take care of you. And the one that came to your room was probably your main one, which is your main guard or guardian angel. And because you were so angry, he wanted to come and show you you didn't have anything to be angry about. And you're not alone. Yeah, yeah. The, you're not alone. Is it, the other one is your counsel. Is this a, Everyone has is a this a school? Is is this a school? Is this a school? Yes, this is a school. You can't get out till you graduate. <laughs> it's a long if, school. If, if you have if you have if you have enough. Okay, so if I realize that every cell, every organism, every atom is part of the prime creator, and if I realize in my heart that we're all here to experience separation and be apart from part, and if I know that now in my heart, and if I look at every being and realize that they're an, a being that's growing and their ego is involved with their self because they can't separate the left brain from the right brain, and if, if I walk this earth now after what I've experienced, do you think I'm able to graduate? Because I sure would like you to hear say yeah. <laughs> Not ready yet. You have a lot to learn before you graduate. This is a long school. Oh, God, Dolores. <laughs> he, he oh my awesome. goodness! You're he on your be a way. Wave too. You can't say that. We but don't have the, enough information. The um, Earth school is the most difficult planet in the universe to live on. It's most challenging and. Well, difficult. don't you think that I don't already know that? <laughs> well, you're beginning to take your baby steps anyway. At least you're you're asking questions, and you're beginning to find out there's a whole lot more out there than you ever knew before. So Julia likes to say the veil is lifting, because when you come in, the veil comes down, and it's the veil of forgetfulness. You forget why you're here. You forget all about God. You forget that all of this is just a game. It's just an illusion, and we have to find our way back. So the the veil is thinning. A lot more people right now are becoming more aware sooner. Yeah, but with his attitude for things, I mean, he sounds very much like a wave, and a wave doesn't follow the same. I know, but no. it still means uh, they're here to learn. Yeah, I that's feel fine. I've always, I've always felt, and I've always been in a situation my whole life that I've always been put in a situation of leadership. Uh-huh. Uh When I was in scouts. Uh, they made me a patrol leader. They made me, uh, I wasn't even qualified because I wasn't even a first class, but they made me a patrol leader. I was second class. And when we went to the camporee, my patrol won the blue ribbon. 
I played music in a band back in the 60s and 70s, and we were really good. And you know what? We played Motown music, all white people with black singers, and we broke the ice between black and white people. And, and this was back before the, even the riots happened. Um, I'm a systems buster. I know that. I came here to shake up the reality, but to really to realize in the fact that consciously I'm still a human being and I have limitations. The baggage. No, yeah. I don't have limitations anymore. I believe that the atom is ninety nine point nine nine percent empty, so that I understand geometry, I understand sacred geometry, I understand mm -hmm. that rocks have consciousness, I understand that the trees and the 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 the, the mice and the birds and, and everything out there exists all in oneness in order for us to experience this experience. I also understand what's going on with the dark side trying to manipulate the consciousness of this planet. Um, I came here somehow, some way. I'm trying to find out my identity. I'm a systems buster. I'm not afraid of anything that the dark side has to offer. I have no fear. But I'm still a human being, and I cry like, like, Look at these poor, pitiful people being manipulated into a situation that, that to me, look, I got to tell you what, when I was in the third grade, I went to Catholic Church, and the nuns told me that you should feel sorry for them poor little people to go to public school because they can't go to heaven. You uh. understand about how the Catholic Church has manipulated my brain? And I had to break away from that all, and I had to bury it, and I had to get rid of it, and I had to be frustrated about it. Oh, yeah. I've uh, seen many Catholics that come to see I me. I saw Tarzan movies when I... I saw Tarzan movies when I was a little kid by Warner Brothers, and they made the black people look like they were monkeys in the jungle. And I looked at black people for for a lifetime looking how... And, and then... I was one of the first people to have a black person to come sing in my band in 1967. So I, I'm a systems buster. I hate this world. I think it sucks. And um, somehow you need to connect me with people that love me, Dolores, because but you are my education and my knowledge and my experience I have already had a near death experience, and I'm begging to you, please help me. I need help because if somebody doesn't help me to let me run my mouth to the world to wake these people up. Okay, but um, you're here for a reason. You chose to come to Earth. Nobody made you come. You came here to help. I know that. And you but know how many times I wanted to, wanted to do myself in, but you know what? I'm not a quitter. I but you get here is. and people forget. You know, That's when the veil comes down. And now we're beginning to back and become aware of what's going on. And that's where we're at right now. Everybody is getting their psychic abilities back. They're beginning to become more aware. And this is where the world is going. And it's beautiful. It's wonderful. We're making yeah. such beautiful. I love you. I now we are friend. changing the world. And you're a part of it if you want to be. Well, and like you said, the systems buster, see, that's part of what you're doing. That's what's creating a lot of this new world is because people are making changes. Yeah, and you're right in the middle yeah. of it. You're a part of it. You mm -hmm. have a very important role to play. Thank you. <laughs> that is... Uh -huh. Just remember, you're here for a reason. You came, and that could very well be the reason. Just don't get caught up in the hate and in the in all that the part. The fear and all and of the that. Fear. You know, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on here, but it doesn't have to be that way. And it, you know, and that isn't doesn't have to be what you look at and what you only see. 
Look at the beauty, because you see that too. You were talking about that, how beautiful everything is, and the beautiful animals, and the, you know, look at that. That's what you came here to help. Keep that in focus. Don't get caught up in the other part, because that's for those who want to live in that kind of a world. Right. You don't have to live in that kind of a world. You can live in a world that's beautiful, and that you are making a big help. You're making help with advances. And that's what I'm involved with, and a lot of the people who come to see me are. They found out there is hope out there, and they are making advances. Don't get caught up in this other part, the negative part, because that's the part that's not real. I I think that's the challenge of Earth. That's game board Earth is, you know, are you going to get caught up? I mean, that's all there to be a distraction or to see if you will get caught up in it. And it's your choice whether you do or not. So that's just part of the, the playing game here. It's just a mm-hmm. game. That's all it Absolutely. is. Absolutely. That's why Julie calls it Game Board Earth. It's just a game. But you, it becomes real. We don't realize it. Mm-hmm. It's just a game. It's just an illusion. We take it so seriously. And when you step back and look at it, hey, I'm just playing a part here. What kind of part do you want to play? And what do I want my world to be? Because you can make your world any way you want it to be. You're not caught up in all this other junk that's out there. Unless you want to be. If you want to be, then that's nobody. Fine. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's, if you want to that's be. a lesson he'll learn from that, well, too. That's a choice. It's a cho- Everything is choices on Earth. But... Um, it's uh, it's not that bad. It's really a very beautiful, wonderful place. And we, you come here to learn a lot. That's why they call it the most difficult and challenging planet of the universe to live in. But you chose it. Nobody makes you come. When you look at it from that direction, you can see how much good you're, you're doing, how much I mean, the changes you're already making and you don't even notice it. You don't think about it. Right. And but, but what's important, though, is your guide came to you. Your whole council showed themselves to you so you can see that you're not alone. And you, it's probably to help you remember exactly what's going on. You are here with, for a reason and you are not alone. You've got a whole army with you. And you could have died that night and you didn't do it. He was trying to show you that you've got a whole lot more work to do here. That first one he talked about. um, Oh, the the tree. He walked out the front door. Yeah, all that is is you were changing dimensions. In my books, we cover this a lot, and I've all done it on other shows, too, that we're constantly moving in and out of dimensions. And in some dimensions, you don't look very different. But there's countless dimensions, and in some of them, a tree will be there, and then another dimension, it won't be there. Many people have reported things like this. This just means on that night or morning, whenever it was, when you opened that door, you stepped into another dimension. I think part of it, he hadn't eaten in a week. He'd been sick, so it put him in an altered state to to some degree, so that way he could see through the dimension. He could see through much easier. Mm -hmm. And then it all returned to normal once he went back and began to recover. Does this make sense to you? Or do we lose him? Anyway, but that... That is what yeah. the, It was shifting dimensions. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, I hope if we did lose him, he got his he got right. answers right. and he heard it anyway. Yeah. We appreciate your... your calling in, Earl, and we wish you the best. Don't, you know, just trust in yourself and trust in what you're doing. You're here for a reason and you're doing it. And you're never, ever alone. Okay, so uh, anyway, I was about to give out the toll-free number in case someone wants to call in. Apparently he knew the number already. Mm -hmm. But in case anyone else wants to call in and talk, the toll-free number is one eight 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 six two seven six zero zero eight. 
888-627-6008. And, well, one thing we did want to bring up about the trip to Glastonbury and to, we did our class over there, was um, you did what you call the sacred tour? Sacred tour after the class. After the class was over. And tell them where you went on that. We went to Stonehenge and Avery. Uh, we went by the Alton Barn White Horse on the way to um, West Kennet Longborough. Now, how many oh. did you have on that bus? Uh, I think it was 44. 44. Mm-hmm. But something very different is about over there, if many of you have ever gone to Stonehenge, everything has changed. And you were just there a year ago, yeah. and I was there two years ago. Right. Everything has completely changed now about Stonehenge. Yeah, well, I mean, Stonehenge itself is the same. Yeah, the structure. <laughs> they didn't move the rocks. <laughs> they didn't change them around, no. but getting there and the... What do you want to call it? The well, those of those of you that were ever have ever been there, it was just a small, little visitor, a little gift shop, and where you would get your ticket. Then they had a little area to park, and, was, and if you had very many people there, you had no parking. I mean, it was really hard to find a place. But then you would just walk down a path and went under the road, and then a tunnel under yeah. the road, and came up on the side where Stonehenge was. Right. And right. they were awful toilets and things. Yeah. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, it was it wasn't very good weren't very good accommodations for the you know, people coming in. And more so. people were coming all the time, especially mm-hmm. when you had the equinoxes. Oh yeah, there'd be thousands of people there then. Thousands. Because you were there at one of the equinoxes. I was there for two different ones. And there was just no way they could handle that many people it was just getting more and more popular. I don't think they even had that part open. The, the visiting thing it's like 'cause it was free, so everybody just went off on over. They didn't even you didn't, they didn't have that part open. It was early in the morning. For the equinox, they let them in free right. then. Right. But tell them what it is like now. Well, now we were on a bus, and we're pulling up, and I'm used to, because, I mean, a highway goes right by Stonehenge, and I'm used to you driving on that, and you can see Stonehenge long before you ever get there, and you're coming up, and then you go and park, and then you have to walk back across the street or under the street. Yeah, underneath and, the highway. Right. And... Um, so here we are, we're on the bus, and all of a sudden we come into a parking area, and it's like, well, where are we? And they said, we're here, or what? Well, we never saw Stonehenge, I'm used to seeing it on the side of the road. And there's this great big building, that was all different, and they said, yeah, that's the new center, They and it's built, I don't think how far we went, it was at least a mile away from Ooh. Stonehenge. New visitor and, center? Yeah, so a visitor center, it's got a gift shop, and where you get the tickets, and Tons of restrooms. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's like this huge hangar. I mean, it's beautiful. Somebody said um, it was built. Oh, it was it was designed to look like an Australian sheep shearing. <laughs> <laughs> what that has to do with Stonehenge, I do not no, know. No, I've been to Australia but, uh, many times. I don't know what a sheep shearing yeah. shed looks like. Yeah, it's like, but it's big and it's got like a sweeping roof, and uh, I mean, it's very pretty. It's just so different, and it just opened in December, so it's very new. And uh, but anyway, then they have a, a busing, a little shuttle system. You get on these little buses or, or trolley cars and stuff, and they'll they'll take you over in another another way. I'm not even sure. I I couldn't tell where we were related to where we used to be. Uh-huh. But they bring you up to a point, and then you walk the rest of the way to Stonehenge. So you don't go under the highway anymore. No, no. But it could be where they brought us was around that point or something. I don't know. It was, I have no idea where we were. (laughs) It it all looked different. (laughs) Nobody can tell you. I didn't ask. I was just trying to, you know, you just, they they shuttle you in here and then you, then when you come out and then you, you go get the bus and you go back. And so. Do you think it's better or worse or what? Well, the people that have been there, because someone that was with us, that he was grumbling and complaining, and he was like, it was always, always fine the way it was. Why did it have to be changed? But, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily fine. I mean, it, the parking wasn't uh, sufficient. Um, I mean, if you had very many people, it was, it was just, it didn't, it probably, it worked, but it could be done better. So I, I think, I thought it was fine. It was high class now. I mean, it's just like you took something up, you know, where before it was just little, Little building. It, yeah. it was just a little thing. <laughs> it was very backwoodsy and stuff. And now it's high class. 
So it's well, I've been wonderful. hearing for years they were going to have you come in about a mile away, but I couldn't figure out how they were mm-hmm. going to do it. And then it was funny because then when we were driving back to the airport and we come, I said, well, this is, you know, usually you can drive right by Stonehenge. And I thought, well, everything's different now. But no, we drove right by Stonehenge, and there they were, the little rocks by the road. <laughs> well, we were on the other side of it. No, yeah, but this is how we normally come up on it when, on you, when you drive this route. But I didn't know if that was still going to be there because of the new, the other thing. But it was, it's still there. Yeah. Well, they can't move the stones. <laughs> no, and they didn't move the highway. So. Um, hmm. Well, with more and more tourists going in there, they have to change things. So that's a big difference. So if any of you going over there, I think this would be something to think about, that it's going to be different. If you've never been there... It, it, you won't notice anything. You won't you notice won't. Any, any difference. No. It'll be like most um, um, attractions. You have a system to get in. Before there wasn't a system. Now there's a system, and we're used to that. You mm-hmm. you go and you check into the visitor center and then you're taken there. <laughs> so okay, but don't think a burial will ever be made modern. I don't think so. I don't think it can be. Well, the be- biggest thing they did, but that was there before. They have a parking area outside of town, and then I mean it's just yeah, and then you can walk in. Where the first times I was there, we drove in and you couldn't find any place to park, and and that was. That was problemsome, and then, but then this time we pulled in and we parked in a parking area. And I thought, well, I don't remember this, but then I do remember when you were there the last time, and we I did went. that. It was a parking area then as well, so that parking area has been there. Johnny, we had to walk quite a way, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's a good walk to get from there to Abbey Town. But because Abbey is right there, the circle is right there where the town is. Mm-hmm. I don't see how they can change much about that. Mm-hmm. But it's like anything. We've been going over there. I've been going for 22 years since the early 90s, and things will change gradually. Especially if you have more and more tourists. You've got to accommodate them. Right. But you were looking for crop circles, too, and at that time of the of the month, they're just in Well, they're actually, I, we actually saw one. Um, it's as we were, it's so funny because um, the bus we were pulling up because West Kennet Longboro is really just literally next to Avery. <laughs> I mean, it was like, and it's okay, we're just going to go a couple minutes and we're there. And they stopped the bus, but I sit there's a circle in the crop, and I thought, oh, look at there. And then as they stopped the bus, somebody said, oh, crop circle, but it was just a circle. That's all there was to it. Mm-hmm. And so, and I thought that's what everybody got off the bus to go see. And I'm sitting there and. You know, because uh, we were actually doing some energy work on the bus. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, I was sitting there thinking, well, they just gone to look at this this circle, but they're just gone, they're gone. I mean, they didn't come back. I thought, well, that's not enough to go spend all this time on. Then I finally realized, oh, this is where we were going. This is West Kennet Longboro, <laughs> and, so, um, and they had a long walk to go to to get there and stuff. So I, I is, didn't actually see. What it. is the Longboro? What is that? Huh, good I, cause I went and saw the little placket because I didn't go to it. I didn't realize we were there. Um, basically, it's like a, a, a burrow is, you know, it's like a, <laughs> a piece of land or it's like um, uh, a, like a, well, when they actually got it, they told me it was like a system of caves in oh, there is what it was in there. It was underground. On the drawing, it looked like a long um, piece of, uh, like a, Domed land, you know, kind of that'd be a burrow, like like a burrow, burrow, yeah, like a rabbit would do or something. It would be dig underground and make a tunnel, and that's kind of what it looked like on their drawing. Uh, The people that went there and were explaining it, they said it was like it where you went in wasn't as big as what was what was there, kind of like um, Newgrange, Newgrange, but you could see it was like a a chamber of uh, connected caves or some something, and then it was really. I guess there's a lot of energy in there. Uh, on the little thing, it said that there had been 36 bodies found there, but I think what it was is it was late. It was after after it had already been done. They later used it as a burial thing, so it had nothing to do with what it was actually not for. the original. Yeah, but I didn't original. I didn't see that part of the tour, so I can't tell you what it actually was. <laughs> so. 
but a lot of times they're not what they originally were right. built for anyway. Because mm-hmm. over thousands of years, they are going to move things around. They said the energy was very powerful in there, though. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm planning on my next trip over there just going and doing a private tour of it. Hmm. Then I can tell you something about it. Okay. <laughs> Well, do you want to talk a little bit about, uh, we had a good t- trip to England. Uh-huh. We'll want to talk a little bit about October. We're going to have the cruise. Right. That's, cruise of the Mediterranean. Yeah, that's, and that's going to be fun. And, it, and it's really, you know, we do conferences and we do, love to do cruises. And this is, we thought, well, let's just see, because we did a class before on the cruise. Yeah. And we've done some workshops. On a cruise. Last year we did the one on the Panama Canal cruise. Right. And then, then a couple years ago we did on the uh, Mediterranean cruise, we did some workshops with different people. And so it's like we're stepping it up. We're just trying to see what it would be like to have a conference. A conference. And so we're cute. having, yeah, we're, so we're having speakers doing talks, but then they're also doing some workshops. So we have a combination. So you can get a lot of good material from very good people. And, uh, and then also then we have like, like eight ports. I mean, it's something like eight excursions going on, you know. Because it's eleven day cruise. We have three days at sea, and that's when we're doing the conference. And then there's, um, I mean, we're doing something every day. So it's yeah, be eight, eight excursions, and that's all included. Yeah, that's is interesting. A lot of times you go on a cruise, you you want to go ashore and see. You think you have to pay extra right. for the tour, mm-hmm. but in this case, it's all included in the one price. You pay one price, that takes care of the whole thing. Takes care of all your excursions, all the talks, all the workshops, all the meals, all your your rooms, and and it even includes an extra night um, after the cruise at this five-star hotel in in Rome. And we're still trying to finalize this, but Robert Baval may may do a lecture there on his latest book on the Vatican, so that's why you know, Rome. <laughs> it's going to be right there. Uh, if he doesn't do that, then we'll have another excursion there. So, I mean, it's just full of activity. And it's all concluded, mm-hmm. which is very unusual yeah. for any cruise to do that. And the cruise begins in Istanbul. So all you have to do is get over to Istanbul, right. get on the ship, and it ducks, it, it ends in Rome. Right. You go to Istanbul and you come home from Rome. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be really exciting, and we have a lot of good speakers. Yes, yeah. have Robert Baval, and he'll be he'll be doing a couple of different talks. You know, his specialty is talking. Egypt, right? And we've had him before on the show, and I think we have, and we've mm-hmm. talked about him. He was at our conference, yeah. but um, he talks about ancient Egypt and what he's done, the explorations there. He's written many books. And the latest one is about the Vatican, all the secrets that, that have been hidden there. And then we're going to have Guy Needler, right. who is one of our very popular authors. We, we published four of his books, and he'll be speaking on the main one, The History of God. And then who else we're going to have? Maria Wheatley. Maria Wheatley, who is a very famous dowser. And her, we published her father's book, which was the Essential Dowsing Guide. But she knows so much about these ancient sites and about the uh, the energies. She could feel the energy. Right. Well, she was leading the tour, the sacred tour. She was leading it. And, I mean, her her wealth of information is <laughs> just amazing. I mean, what she knows. Is amazing about these sacred mm-hmm. sites and, yeah. and all of that, and she's very much into like a lot of the hidden information, right? Hidden knowledge, and she's going to be on the cruise. And who else? There's going to be you, yeah, <laughs> and you, and me, uh-huh. <laughs> and then and Vitaly's going to do a talk also. Yeah, so, but but those are going to be packed into the three days. And the rest of the time, I'll see where we're going to go. We're going to start in Istanbul. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have some of the ports incorrect, so I'm going to correct you if you do it. Okay. Um, I need to see a, um, a map here. I'll get it. Well, 
the one port that we are a little worried about, we're supposed to go to the Holy Land. It's because they're calling it the Holy Land Cruise. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to go to the Holy Land. Right. But with all the violence over there right now in, in Israel, we're not sure what's going to happen there. Yeah, but we know, I mean, the cruise lines never stop if there's a problem. They'll go on to something else. So we'll go... We'll go to someplace else. We may go to Egypt. We may go. I mean, it'll it'll they'll create another plan. So it's not like there will be an issue. It's not like they're going to drop us in this <laughs> in a volatile situation. It won't happen. No, because they won't go anywhere if there's any danger. But um, they'll take us to some good ports anyway. But I was trying to think. Uh, what are the other ports? We didn't bring that paper in here. Right. Um. Well, anyway, it goes, it goes to, to Ephesus. That's the first stop. Yeah, we were there before. Mm-hmm. That's where what they call Mary's house is supposed to be, where she lived, Mary the mother of Jesus. Mm-hmm. But I have a problem with that. Okay, talk about it. <laughs> because it's um, based on my work, she never lived in Turkey. But we went there to see what it looked like, and it was just a little bitty... Uh, well, for those days, I guess they said it would have been a big house. It wasn't much bigger than a very small house today. It looked like it didn't have more than about two rooms in it. But the amazing thing that I thought was in about it was that they said they called it Mary's house because a nun had yeah. had a vision right. that this was where it was. And it was way up on top of this hill. The bus had to take us all the way up there. It was just beautiful. <laughs> beautiful scenery. <laughs> People, they, was all there, they said when they found that it was just a remains, right. and they had built it up the way it was supposed to look in those days. But here the church has always said, the Catholic Church all these years, that they don't believe in vision. <laughs> Anybody who has a vision has to be working with the devil. And nobody can be psychic. Nobody can see things. But yet they have written that this nun was having a vision that this was Mary's house where she lived. Right. And there's even a picture of the nun mm-hmm. in the house. Yeah. So that's where I have a problem with the whole thing. Is that uh, the church being uh, contradictory or what? Saying one thing and then practicing another, which they do all the time anyway. But uh, definitely... Not, I don't think it's Mary's house. Oh, well. Everybody well, likes it. There's mm-hmm. a wall right outside of it where everybody puts notes, sticks them in the cracks of the I wall. Think it's a prayer wall. Yeah, yeah, you can write something down and you stick it in the wall. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be answered. So it had a lot of very good feelings and emotion, and there was a lot of very religious people there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But I just, according to what I have found in my work, Mary never went to Turkey. But that's up to for grabs. It's still an interesting place to see. Mm-hmm. Well, Unlikely in mm-hmm. Ephesus was we took us to where they make the rug. That was mm-hmm. a school mm-hmm. right. where they're teaching these young girls how to make the rugs by hand, tying all the little tiny knots. Yeah, they said it was a dying art. Yeah, mm-hmm. the dying art that they're trying to teach the young girls how to do it. Otherwise, machines have taken it over. So they took us there, and if you bought any rugs there, the government ships them back. Tax, they won't even charge you for yeah, shipping, no shipping because they want people to uh, buy things there because this really helps the young girls. Mm-hmm. So it, I brought a really beautiful rug back. Mm-hmm. And when somebody saw it in my office, they said, oh, that's a Persian rug. And I said, no, it's not. They said, yes, it is. They turn it over looking at the Persian rug. No, it's a Turkish rug. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be very similar. Mm-hmm. But uh, So there's a lot of interesting things in Ephesus. Mm-hmm. Now, where are the other ones then? Okay. Then at Haifa in Israel. Uh-huh. And then Jerusalem. It has this here. Uh, is it Ash, Ashdod? Anyways, Haifa and Jerusalem. And then it goes... To Malta. We've never been to Malta yet. Yeah, that's actually what I'm most excited about is Malta. 
Well, I do want to. Would li- I would like to see Jerusalem just mm-hmm. to say I've been there. Right. That's one of those bucket list things. <laughs> yeah, because I'm interested in the the you know the temple is long gone, but they have the Wailing Wall, part of the Wailing Wall. But it still be interesting to see it and say we've been to Jerusalem. Right. But that's going to depend on things that are out of our control. It's sure. going to depend on the um, the war right. that's going right. on. Yeah, what's going on there. Mm-hmm. But I would like to see that. And also, yes, I'm interested in seeing Malta. Mm-hmm. Do you want to tell them about Malta? Well, what I, what I, all I know about Malta, um, yeah, just off of Italy, there's a very small island, but what someone was telling us, because they were trying to, they were inviting you to come over and do a class. Oh. And and that was um, when we were working on setting some things up in Egypt, and they were like, but our, we have things here that are older than the pyramids and older, than, so they kind of, they have a lot of um, ancient nice. sites nice. there, yeah. And so that's what I'm interested to see, <laughs> yeah. what's there. Okay. And then we'll go from there. It's amazing how many places we've been that are older than the pyramids. Right. Well, and another thing I thought it was funny was um, when Maria was doing uh, her tour, she was talking about, so I guess she was, is it an archaeologist, or what is it that ones that time everything? Is that be the archaeologist? Ones that dig up yeah. the ground. Okay, yeah. so that, apparently yeah, she went to archaeology school. Okay, so she's an archaeologist. And she was talking about how they date things, how they determine things, and it's all, it's, they don't know. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> know. And they always take the earliest date, like the latest date for the soonest time. They won't take the oldest date because that one never jives with accepted history. Yeah. And so, it's like that, so they don't ever give that one when that's prob- that's the real, that may be closer to the real one. It, you know, and then she's talking about, well, then you have, because they do it by, it's a sampling of the dirt, you know, it's how they can age, but you have worms and you have things like that that stir up the dirt, so that can even affect it more. And so it's like, you, they don't know. Yeah. But so but then, I know that a lot of places, they don't want you to mess with the history. Right. They don't want you to find things that are older because they've got their accepted date mm-hmm. line for their mm-hmm. history, and they don't want that. Exactly. Thing. I mean, that's the way for the earth. No, it's only this old. And anything else that you find, it's like, no, that just doesn't work. It doesn't compute. No, no, no. <laughs> and I've found lots of, with all these travels, we found lots of things that are old. Right. Much older than the pyramids. Mm-hmm. But that's part of the fun of this. Right. And then from Malta, we go into Italy, don't we? Or right. Messina, uh-huh. yeah. is that Sicily? That's Sicily. And then, then it goes into Naples. Yeah. yeah. Sicily, Naples, and then Rome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think at Naples, if you want to take a side trip to Pompeii, you can. Yeah. It's right around there. Yeah. Then back to Rome, and they get a the night in the hotel. Mm-hmm. It's all paid for too. Mm-hmm. It's all it's all included. Yeah. So this sounds like it's really um, going to be a really nice um, tour. Oh, absolutely. So if anybody is interested, tell them what they have to do. Well, we have the more information is on the Ozark. Mountain website, so the O Z A R K M T dot com or O Z A R K M T dot com, and it's just on the event. Um, and then it'll instruct you. It'll instruct you eventually to call into our office uh, to actually book the cruise. You know, we have um, we have people trained here to deal with all your questions and to get everything lined up for you. And even our office in England can handle this. Right. But all that no, all that information is on the website. It tells you what's going on. And, uh, it gives you a list of everything. everything. What to do? You have different kinds of stateroom. Okay. So anyway, that's we want to, to tell people about that because I think they'll be excited to go. Absolutely. I love cruises. Yeah. Cruises are fun. I mean, they're they're a great way to vacation, and and a great way to see things. Because you don't have to go from hotel to hotel and go on tour, get guides, and you just stay on the ship. Yeah, for about the same price as you would pay to go and stay in a hotel, and only and then still have to pay to see everything around it. You, it's like you you're on a floating hotel, and it's taking you to all the sites, and all of that's included, and 
and the food's included. I mean, it always works out to where it's less expensive to do a cruise than, than to do it in a most tour. Any other way, yeah. To do the other way. Mm-hmm. And the food is it's 24 hours, 24-7, <laughs> food, food, food. And it's good food. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's, well, it may not be good food, but it's, it's nice tasting food. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anybody who's interested, contact our website, and they'll be able to help you with this. Okay. Well, I think it's coming to time for us to stop. I don't want to go over. Last time he had to pull the plug and get me out of there. (laughs) Okay. So I want to say thank you for everybody from tuning in tonight. We're back now, so for the next few weeks, we'll be live. And thank you, Earl, for your input, and we, we appreciate you calling in. Okay. So thanks, everyone, for listening tonight. Good night, everybody. Make it great. If you enjoyed the show, check out more of our other videos, and be sure to subscribe and click the like button. Thank you for listening to the Metaphysical Hour with Dolores Cannon.